Every day is a chance. A chance to flip the script. An invitation to take everything we know and reinvent it. Do it better. It takes courage. It's an obsession. Never settling for just good enough. It takes a true creator to make something out of nothing. It takes guts. Calling all creators. Those who see obstacles as a chance to win bigger. Calling all creators. The game changers, the difference makers, the boundary breakers, the tomorrow takers. Calling all creators. Get up. And then, adapt. Write new rules. Calling all creators. It's a new day. Create something. Hello. Welcome to the uh, first breakout session. Uh, as introduced, I'm Peter, and this is Ana Luisa. And we want to start by talking about who we are and why we're here today. So, I should stand on this side of the stage. Uh, I'm Australian, if the accent didn't give it away. Oh, there we go. Good. Uh, this is my exit strategy that doesn't work out for me with Adidas in, uh, in Europe, in Germany, uh, the beautiful beaches of Australia. And I work at Adidas uh, in our sales department, but I'll share more shortly on that. Yes, and I'm Anna Luisa Peters, um, born and raised in the Netherlands, spent some time in Brazil and the US as well. So uh, we're covering the globe, as you see. Um, industrial designer, um, that's my background, but um, spent quite some time as an in-house designer at a bank as well, and now joined LiveWork this year to basically um, work very much with Peter on uh, the digital transformation that they are in. And uh, the journey that followed is actually the reason that we're here today. So. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So, first, a little bit more about ourselves. And we wanted to start this around the human connection. Because actually, a lot of what I do and what my team do is around technology. Uh, I'm not a service designer. I can also put my hand up, as Tim did, to say, this isn't my core. At my core, what I work on is solutions the convergence of uh, systems, people, and process. But I grew up in retail. Uh, my background is serving customers on a shop floor, working through to management, moving to the head office in Australia, working on operations. How do we make sure that we're delivering a great customer experience in our retail stores? And that evolved over time uh, to be a whole lot more than that. And the journey from Adidas is very similar. Click. There we go. This is some photos from 1954. This is one of the first shoe fairs that uh, Adi Dassler, our fan founder, was uh, part of. And it used to be Adidas for the first 50 to 60 years of our uh, existence. This is the way we sold shoes. It was selling it to those who were going to sell it to our consumers. You go to a fair, uh, you have great product, you convince the people who need to serve our consumers that it is great product. They take an order. 12 to 18 months later, they get those shoes and they sell them on. But as my own journey has evolved from just being about retail and serving that customer in that physical context, uh, so too has the journey with Adidas evolved beyond being a wholesale conversation. So I'm a sales guy. I'm not a service designer. I'm at my core. I don't work in IT, although I've dabbled here and there uh, and occasionally get accused of being an IT guy. Um, but at the core, as I said, it's about bringing together and building solutions. My remit is to understand how do we move from click. Uh, how do we bring the Adidas mission to life? How do we be the best sports company in the world? How do we build sustainable uh, products in a way that uh, excites our consumers, excites our athletes, uh, helps us to change lives uh, with the power of sport, and ultimately make sure that as an organization we're responding more and more to what consumers want and how they want to engage. So I'm moving, my, the role of my team is to move from this traditional way of selling, be it my own experience around growing up in retail or Adidas as in being a wholesaler, into understanding the new ways that consumers want to engage with us. So I work in omni-channel solutions. 
My role is not to own a channel, not to own a touch point, not to own a distribution method for our consumers. But at, at its core, my role and my team's role is how do we connect all the different ways and places that consumers are uh, engaging with us as a brand and purchasing our products um, and connect that with all of the locations that we've located our product globally. And the other dimension that we're, we're facing is the pace of change. We heard earlier from Lorna and Tim as well the, uh, the digitalization of uh, the industry, the convergence of people and technology. I was at a conference two weeks ago about robotic process automation. Has anyone been to a conference of robotic process automation uh, in Frankfurt, Germany? I can tell you it's a very different crowd than uh, is here today uh, and a very different focus. The Terminator slide, I think, came up a couple of times. The future is robots, uh, as I heard two weeks ago. And what I'm hearing today is the future is and what I, I completely subscribe to, what Lorna was saying, the future is the con convergence of bringing the strength and the best of people together with the best of technology, and that we're better together. And the VUCA uh, element is the pace of change. You saw as well you know, from the agricultural revolution, the industrial revolution, the uh, technology revolution, and the upcoming AI apocalypse. The pace of that change is ever increasing. And so the world that we operate in, the solutions that I build today are not going to be relevant in three years. So how do I build a team? How do I engage uh, our consumer in the ways that they want to be engaged with and maintain the resilience within our, our teams to appreciate that what we build today may not be relevant tomorrow and be able to respond to whatever that new challenge is? And that's the VUCA world that we live in and the, the challenge that we're responding to. And so the way that we're going about that is through a digital transformation and more specifically within uh, the functions that I either lead or uh, a part of this journey, representing around four to 500 people, uh, is a shift to Agile. And not just the traditional shift to Agile to say, how do we do Scrum, how do we uh, do this process, what are the ceremonies, sure, that's part of it. But first and foremost, it's about how do they hashtag own their journey? How do we create Agile mindsets that drive this understanding of the VUCA world that we live in that uh, allows us to be resilient and responsive to that changing nature of what it is consumers want and expect of us as a brand. And bringing that together as well, linking back to that mission about uh, to be the best sports company in the world and responding to that consumer, how do we bring in the elements of uh, the consumer experience into that and actually make that the center of what we do as the guiding light towards uh, the, the fast pace of change and the solutions we need to bring to bear. So it's four things. First and foremost, to be consumer obsessed. Second is to respond faster. And it's not to be faster, it's to respond faster. It's to do the right things in the right ways that our consumers expect. It's about creating trusting environments. I talk a lot with my team around, it's not about the sprint, it's about the marathon. We love our sporting analogies at Adidas. That it's no good if we beat ourselves to death to deliver the thing right now because we need to be here in three years' time. We need to create an ecosystem that can continually evolve and is ready for that next challenge. And how do we build that trust as we move from a top-down leadership, traditional way of managing and leading teams to the bottom-up or the organic approach? And lastly, yes, structure and tools. We're a global organization. We have 60,000 employees worldwide. We operate in pretty much every country you can think of, uh, in every channel and way of serving that you could. Uh, big, big mind shift for me, moving from Australia, where you've got like a little island surrounded by uh, oceans, to then go, how do we interact differently with the consumer in Russia, to our consumer in the US, to uh, the way that we engage with a French consumer in the heart of Paris? And so those tools and that structure becomes critical in terms of scaling our success, and we'll, we'll talk about that more shortly. And so and this is, at this point, uh, I want to hand over to Ana Luisa uh, to share some of the journey we've gone on, the ability of bringing together our agile transformation, the ways of working with this consumer experience. So this is yours. Thank you. <laughs> right. So. It was up to us to start flipping the script ourselves and to make a reference to the video to be creators about it. Um, how does that, yeah. yeah that's responding slowly. Um, so part of this challenge that we have before us is to integrate these two mindsets or approaches of Agile and CX. 
And as maybe I think quite a few of you have uh, um, experience with this, um, this comes with a lot of questions. So you have these two approaches. How do they resonate? How do they maybe even overlap? Um, and how do they um, conflict with each other? So there's a lot of tricky questions that this integration comes with. And a key for us to, uh, to tackle this challenge is to collaborate closely with agile coaches to, to find the answers to that. And we've come a long way, but we're still finding it out as we go. Um, and integrating these two approaches is only actually a small part of what we're doing. Because if you zoom out a little bit, um, the, 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 uh, the, the actual challenge that we have here is that we're building capabilities because we want to empower the teams uh, at Adidas to be able to deliver those meaningful experiences. Um, and that is indeed about being agile and consumer centric, but, is, but this is also about strategy and it's about change management. It's about training teams. It's about coaching them. It's about embedding this new way of working in their processes and systems. It's about describing new roles. Um, and so as you see, it's a very broad and complicated package. And we'd like to unpack that a little bit, a little bit for you today. This is our journey, roughly. So um, we started at the beginning of the year with a pilot. We took one product team uh, from Peter's team and um, invited them to play around with, or to experiment, actually, with the newly designed Agile CX approach. And applying it, of course, you learn a lot. And we iterated on it until we were confident enough to be able to scale it up. And that's what we're still doing at the moment. And we're also focusing now on embedding um, this approach uh, in the organization so that it will actually stick and become a new normal for them. And it's still a little bit abstract now. So what I'd like to do is to demystify all the buzzwords and to show you the human side behind this transformation. And what was quite interesting to see is that the most things that we're learning here, they stem from having to balance different things at the same time. And we'll share with you today three balancing acts that we're dealing with right now. And um, let's start off with the first one. The first one is the biggest one, and it's actually quite all-encompassing. It's about translating the dream into reality. Now, the dream is exactly what Peter just explained uh, beautifully, and um, it's quite straightforward. Of course, we want to be consumer-centric, and of course, we want to respond faster, and um, we all agree on that. There's very little discussion about this dream. However, what that looks like in reality, in other words, what do people really have to do differently tomorrow? That is a very tricky thing to do. Maybe a hundred times more complex than, um, than stating the dream, like uh, Lorna uh, also referred to this morning. Just to give you an, a little example, this is reality. This is the technical landscape that um, the teams are working in. And it may not surprise you that we hear very often that uh, these teams would love to deliver that meaningful end-to-end -end experience, but are struggling to get things done because they depend on so many other teams. So one way um, we uh, are trying to tackle that particular challenge is to use consumer journeys exa exactly for that. So to use it as a communication tool, as a vehicle to seek alignment with all those stakeholders. The second balancing act is all about pace. So it's good to mention here that the teams that we're working with, they have to continue delivering. So they don't have spare room in their agendas to, uh, to transform themselves. They, uh, they, they have to produce. So we're asking them to slow down a bit in this transformation. And it's, it's, it's quite natural that uh, this comes with quite some resistance from them. So, just to give you uh, an example of what we mean with slowing down, it actually applies on two levels. So first of all, transformation itself already costs time and effort because people have to change. They have to adapt to this new way of working. And that inherently comes with having to slow down a bit. 
But secondly, we're also, also asking these teams to, um, to listen more to their consumers and to gather more input about and from those consumers, quantitative but also qualitative, and that's not something they're used to yet. So an example, we're inviting them to go visit a store, go there, experience what those consumers are experiencing and see with your product in mind how you can impact that experience positively. And the feedback we, we often get is, I would love to do this and I totally see the value of such an activity, but I really can't find the time because I'm being pushed to deliver. So how do we deal with this slow, fast balancing uh, act? <laughs> First of all, we try to ask the teams to slow down as, um, as little as possible. So we try to limit the degree to which we ask that from them. For instance, by leveraging on uh, existing processes and meetings and tools and, and software that they're already using. Um, and also to introduce new things gradually to them so that it's not one big bomb of newness at once. But we also try to create some space for them to slow down. So we try to make room for them to have trainings and to have coaching. And we try to incorporate the uh, Agile CX activities uh, in their own ob objectives and key results. So that's the way we deal with the slow, fast balancing act. Then lastly, um, the third balancing act is about scaling and tailoring. So this transformation is, of course, about scale. Across the board, you want to set a new standard. You want to have consistency in mindsets, in language, uh, and in, in a way of working. Um, and uh, to be aligned with each other and to have an efficient, broader team, of course. But you also see that every team is a little bit different and every individual is also different and has their own needs. So you have to tailor, but that comes with diversity. So the more you tailor, the more diverse all the ways of working will become. So you have to balance how much you standardize and how much you tailor. To illustrate this with an example, um, we tried to standardize every product team to uh, focus on one consumer journey at a time so that they have focus and, from end to end. And, and this is working quite well for some teams, but from others, we, we noticed resistance. And what was that about? So we started to explore that and imagine you're a product owner and your um, responsibility is to deal with all the um, the queries and questions that come in from consumers about their online orders. Um, she came up to me and said that I'm, I'm worried, like I don't feel comfortable focusing on one journey because I impact multiple journeys in one episode, in one moment uh, within those journeys. So this is not working for her and that is fine. You just have to find another way to make CX work for her. Um, and one way where dealing with uh, the scaling and tailoring balance is that we sliced the Agile CX approach into different modules where some modules are applicable for everybody across the board, all the teams, no matter your role, and others are only applicable and relevant for some. So we made it modular and also to really make sure that we find that smooth, perfect fit with reality, for each of these, um, uh, for each of these uh, people who are impacted by the transformation, we do one-on-one -on -one coaching. And wrapping up um, the three balancing acts, um, I talked about translating the dream into reality, about going slow to go fast, and also about scaling while tailoring. These have been the most powerful um, sources of learnings for us along the way. There are more, um, but these were the most prominent ones. When we go back to um, the slide I showed you earlier about capability building, and we're, we're intending for the teams to go to the upper right corner, of course, we're seeing where we've already made quite some impacts, and I'm happy to say we're proud of that because it's, uh, it's hard work. Um, and we still have quite some... Uh, uh, Room for growth, which is exciting. And we're not done yet. We're in the middle of it as we speak. So I'd like to give it back to Peter. That's my cue. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. This is your cue. <laughs> cool. So, thanks, Anna Louisa. Yeah. So, we shared a few snippets of the journey that we're on, and it's certainly a journey that continues. Our, our agile transformation or digital transformation that uh, we're undertaking, which includes our consumer experience uh, work, is a three to five year journey. And that's my business speak of saying it's probably never ending. Uh, we just put it further enough out there to go, yeah, it's three to five years, but the reality is every year it's evolving slightly. Uh, again, in that response to the consumer. And the biggest uh, single moment and um, where I share this slide is how do we take the ambition of being consumer obsessed? It's at the core of what Adidas is and make it real. I'm, I, I, I count it as a strength to be able to stand in front of people and uh, certainly my teams and align towards a vision and most of the time people are following me uh, and that's a good thing. But there's one thing to understand to say we want to be consumer obsessed. It's a completely separate thing to understand what does that mean for me on a Tuesday afternoon when I'm trying to test the next release within this sprint. What does it mean to the way that I have to engage with my stakeholders or uh, interact and sell the vision of uh, the next epic that we want to deliver or the next capability or service we want to provide or to a development team, which is a mix of onshore, nearshore and offshore, how do we make sure that we're leveraging their skills you know, and they're, they're first to come and say, I'm seven steps removed from the consumer, what does this mean for me? But if we can untap, and this is the opportunity, if we can untap their understanding of the reason we need to integrate A to B, the reason that we're delivering this service is ultimately so the consumer can have a better experience, can enter one of our stores and uh, bring with them the information, the knowledge, the research they've done online, and empower our store associates to have a eye-to-eye -eye conversation because they're also empowered with the same information then they might understand and instead of connecting A to B, they may be able to say, no, I want to connect A to C because that's a better uh, experience ultimately for your consumer. And that's the journey we're on. How do you take that ambition and make it real in the day-to-day? -day? And it's not easy. Uh, it's, it's bloody hard work if I uh, use an Australianism. Uh, and I'm keen, uh, we're not going to do, I think, Q&A today, but... Um, in this session, but I'm here for the rest of the day. We are around as well. I'm, I'm very excited to also learn uh, and have a conversation with you all. I love the format so far and uh, looking forward to understanding your dimension so that I can go back to the robotic process automation guys and say, oh, it's not all about the robots. There's also a human connection. And how do we build together the best of humanity, the best of the machines, and be stronger together? So back to the start, calling all creators. It's a continual journey. All of us are creators in our own mind. Maybe I need to change my uh, job title from uh, being around solutions to be around designing. It resonated with me this morning in terms of how we broadly categorize that. Uh, but thank you. Uh, looking forward to the connection. And I, and I leave you with a challenge of, uh, and I think Tim Malone, Tony Malone, uh, has a new book called Superminds, which uh, goes into this whole knowledge of how do we in these ecosystems, be it in Cork or be it in uh, businesses like Adidas or in our societies, how do we leverage and create ecosystems or superminds of individuals and machines that can help us uh, respond to the challenges of today and set us up for tomorrow. So that's us. Thank you. See you around. Thank you. And actually, we do have some extra time, so Sweet. I'm going to ask. Oh, we are doing q and A. I'm going to ask some right. questions. Um, first of all, you mentioned the, uh, the sprint and the marathon. And I think uh, for me, uh, so I lead a design team at Capital One. It was one of the, the, uh, the, the bullet points that Lorna had up on the screen earlier this morning. I was at Adaptive Path. Now I lead a, a team uh, constantly struggling with the, the, the need for speed. And, uh, but then under recognizing there's a bigger thing going on. So that sprint versus the, the marathon really resonates. But I'm curious, how are you measuring the, the impact of the marathon versus the impact of the sprint? Definitely. At three levels. Uh, at ultimately business objectives, I'm a business guy. I need to deliver value. And I don't just get millions to play around with to then not deliver. And that's uh, consumer NPS. We use NPS as our key metric, consumer value and happiness towards our, uh, their experience. Net sales and margin. Very business. Sorry that it's that boring, but uh, we are in the business of making money, selling shoes, changing lives through the power of sport. Uh, however, 
um, the more three stripes we get on people's shoes, the better for us as a company as well. But that consumer NPS experience is at its core. That's at an organizational level and certainly a remit for the team. We then measure the sprint and marathon at a team level. Team effectiveness, there's three KPIs. Uh, how long does it take from an idea coming in to it being delivered? So the flow rate. How are we responding to um, the number or the size of our backlog and how is that uh, maturing over time and evolving? And thirdly, uh, how happy are the team? Because as we said, sprint to marathon. And there's, there's some sub, sub KPIs underneath that, but it's a very important metric to say uh, at a team effectiveness level, uh, through stability, through the Hawaii factor, through um, all of the, the NPS surveys we do with our employees as well, are they ready to stick around? Are we creating an environment, a trusting environment that they can deliver against? And then at an individual level, we also manage uh, or look at you know, where is their personal motivation, how are they developing themselves, how are they able to provide the right skills, expertise, and uh, collaboration to be successful. Are you doing any linkage between um, impact and the, the journey story at all? The connection between sprint teams and that larger uh, vision or story? We're starting on that now. I think tying back to so one step backward, as a company, we've been in a massive growth uh, cycle for years and we still have very strong growth. If you've seen our numbers, if you've seen our share price, it, uh, life's good and things are going well. So our big focus has been about how do we capture those opportunities? How do we drive a 20% growth rate in China? How do we maximize and win share in, in the US? And so that focus has been about building the new and so we're just coming into uh, this, where we stabilize this as, a, as an organization and with our new CEO, Casper Rorsted, uh, to take a look backwards, to be conscious and to be humble on where we've come from and has that worked or not and how do we take that forward. So I take that as the abstract to then step back into the specific question. Yes, we've started uh, and it's a big learning curve for the teams to be able to uh, stop for a minute and go, did that work? How do I reflect uh, how the consumers responded to the new experience, the new journey, the new service, and how do I uh, reflect that into the next cycle rather than switching straight to, oh, there's this new exciting thing I could be working on. So early stages there, I think that's a, that's a big next step and challenge for us. We're, we're all in early stages, so <laughs> yeah. it's, it's okay. Um, and one last thing. Uh, so you've been working with LiveWork for a while. Just curious, are you building service design capabilities inside Adidas? Yes. And to be clear, I, I work within one function, within one uh, global function, uh, et cetera. So there are elements that we interact with our brand colleagues and, and defining the who are our consumers, where are we targeting, where do we play. Uh, so there are different initiatives happening. Even LiveWork are working in multiple areas of, of Adidas. Um, so yes, we are building an internal competence. For my team in particular, we're actually just entering in now how do we uh, shift from a very transformation focused, recognizing that omni-channel, what we're doing is hard, that it requires people change. I've got qualified change managers, people change managers in the team, and also implementation managers, project managers, builders, et cetera. Maybe I get some service designers. Uh, and that's the next step to say, how do we evolve that to step out of designing the best process to connect people and technology to thinking about intrinsic, extrinsic motivations, the ecosystem we're creating, and, and those future collaboration uh, points. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you once again to Peter and Anna Luisa. Give them a, hand of, a round of applause. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you.